morning, church. I hope that this past week you have experienced and seen that the Lord is so good. And if you haven't yet, I want to encourage you to intentionally seek Him and to walk with Him and experience the goodness of our God. With that, let's begin. Do you guys like road trips? Maybe you're a huge fan of road trips, or maybe you're not. I've always been a huge fan of going on long road trips ever since I was little. And as I got older, when I started to learn how to drive and be able to go on these trips up by myself, I absolutely love it. And yeah, I really like driving. If you've asked me before, I've probably told you that I love to drive. And as a result, I love going on road trips. Now, I grew up in Anchorage, Alaska, which is the largest city in the state of Alaska. But at most, if you were to drive from one end to the other, it's like 20 to 30 minutes at most. So that means anytime we would go for a trip longer than 30 minutes, it was considered a road trip, right? It could have been one hour, two hours, if we were just going camping or even just going to the next town, um, it would end up becoming some type of road trip for me. Now, one of the many different road trips that we would go on as a family is our annual fishing trip in the summer. It was one of the longer trips that we'd always take, but it's a six hour drive away from the city of Anchorage. And then it's another hour on ATV to get to the fishing spot. And it's a long drive. And as a kid, I remember growing up and every time we would go on these trips, as I sat in the back as a passenger with my siblings, we would always ask this question. And it's a very well-known question when you're on road trips. That is, are we there yet? I used to ask this question all the time. Maybe you have too. Now, social media, pop culture, movies, TV shows, dramas have kind of depicted these scenes where there are children or kids or people that are sitting in the back of a car. And as they're going on this trip, this long road trip, they ask the parents or ask the drivers of the vehicle, hey, are we there yet? And the response is always no. And the question comes up again. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. So stop asking, right? It's a playful phrase but it's a phrase that indicates the fact that we are impatient. We want to know where we are going or when we're gonna to get to the destination. So we ask this question over and over and over because of the fact that we wanna be there. We wanna to get to our destination. So we're asking, hey, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? But the reality is, is we're not. And because of the fact that there's nothing we can do to change how soon we get there or not, the only thing we do is just ask the question. Now, I don't say this very proudly, but definitely I am an impatient person. I want things to go at my pace, right? Faster pace. And I think even more so being Korean, it's like in our blood, right? We want things to go fast, right? We want things now. And I think a lot of us are like this because of the culture that we've grown up in. We live in a world and a culture that wants things faster. We don't have room for slowing down or going at slower paces. We want faster internet, go, go, go. We want faster car, go, go, go. We want faster computers, faster phones, go, go, go is the mentality. And because we're so drawn to this, this faster, 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 we become more and more impatient, especially when things don't go the way that we want it to. Today, we're gonna wrap up the book of 2 Peter. And what we're going to find today is that there's this idea of impatience going on. Remember, Peter is dealing with the issue of false teachers, as we've talked about yesterday. But one of the big problems with these false teachers is that they were spreading a very incorrect message in regards to Jesus' second coming. You see, Jesus in the Gospels and Jesus before had stated very clearly that he was going to come soon. Paul talks about how Jesus' second coming is coming very soon and we should be ready for it. But obviously, many believers thought that when Jesus and Paul and all these people were pointing to this very soon idea, they thought, oh, well, it must be within our lifespan. So you can imagine as they're facing the suffering and facing this persecution, they're probably thinking, oh man, like Jesus definitely is gonna come within our lifetime. We're going through all of this now. Jesus is coming soon. But because of the fact that Jesus had still not come, the false teachers were painting this false picture that Jesus' promise was a lie and that Jesus was not capable of keeping his promises. So in other words, as believers, they were asking this question, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And these false teachers are straight up saying no, but it's not that they're just saying no. They're like, hey, stop talking about it because guess what? Jesus is not coming back. It's not a reality. Forget it. Jesus is lying to us. But Peter knows otherwise. Peter has a different answer. And that's what we're looking at today. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. It says, But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. 
The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Peter drops a truth bomb on these people. He says to not overlook this fact, because very clearly they were overlooking these facts. We might want or think that Jesus is going to come back at a certain time. But the reality is, is Peter is like, hey, you guys are speaking two very different languages. So Peter reminds them, God's time is not the same as our time. It's so clear. These false teachers were thinking their perception of time was what God's time should be. When in reality, we worship a God that is so much more greater than what we know. And because of that, we have to humble ourselves and remind ourselves God's timing is different than ours. But more importantly, God's timing is better than ours. You see, some of us might think, oh, come on, God, like, hurry up. Like, what's the hold up? Why are you going so slow? But Peter knows you're thinking that way, right? Even before you thought it, Peter already knew. And he reminds us gently, hey, God isn't slow. God is going to fulfill the promises that he's made. He's done it before and God will do it again. But even better, even if we are impatient with God, Peter says that God will be patient towards us. You see, God's not only in control, God is always on time. And that's important for us to remember as Christians going through this life as we ask, are we there yet? Are we there yet? I know at times in your walk, you might and probably will feel impatient. You might ask this question, are we there yet? Are we there yet? You might feel like, God, like, why am I not growing? Why do I fall into my sin? Why am I not there yet? Why, God, are you not coming back to stop this evil and sin in the world? God, why are you not answering my prayers? Am I not there yet? God, what's going on? But trust me, or actually trust God because we know that God is in control and that God will be on time. God is patient with us and I'm so glad that he is. So church, remember this, God's time is the best time. So let's turn back to him and trust in his goodness.